I'm Daniel Finley with the Institute for Transportation Research and Education at NC State University. I'm going to introduce the topic of cross slopes and vehicle dynamics in this video, which are essential for safety on curves and proper water drainage on all roads. The overhead aerial view of the roadway is shown on the left, and the simplified roadway alignment is shown on the right. Each end of the roadway is a tangent, and they are connected with a horizontal curve. We'll see how pavement cross slopes are related to these horizontal alignment elements. In the horizontal perspective, a roadway is primarily comprised of tangent or straight sections, which are smoothly connected by curves. The horizontal curves that are used to provide drivers with the transition from one tangent to the next tangent are typically simple curves, which are an arc of a circle. These curves have a single radius value, which represents the sharpness or flatness of the curve. A tangent roadway section has an infinite radius, since it is a straight line, and a horizontal curve has a single finite radius. My other videos have additional information related to horizontal alignment. A straight tangent roadway segment is typically designed with a normal crown for the sole purpose of providing sufficient drainage of water away from the roadway. The term normal crown is used to describe the type of cross slope and the percentage of the slope. Normal crown has a rooftop shape which peaks in the center of the roadway and falls away from the center line at a typical rate of 2%. This means that for a roadway with 12 foot lanes, the edge of the roadway will be 0.24 feet below the elevation of the center line. Most drivers do not notice this amount of cross slope, and this cross slope does not typically affect the ride quality of the vehicle. However, it is essential for reducing the likelihood of hydroplaning. Having the center line as the high point of the roadway reduces the maximum distance that any individual drop of water will have to travel before it leaves the roadway. That maximum distance would be half of the width of the roadway, or the width of one lane in this case. The image on the left presents the cross-section view of normal crown as would be experienced by a driver traveling along the roadway. The image on the right shows a profile view of the center line as the highest point along the cross-section of the roadway. Superelevation is the property of a roadway when the slope along the entire cross-section of the roadway is consistent. Superelevation is typically necessary in horizontal curves to help balance the forces acting on a vehicle and keep the vehicle safely on the roadway. In the picture on the left, the superelevation, or cross slope across the entire roadway, is 4%. Typical superelevation values range from 2% up to 10%. The other picture shows the measurement of superelevation on a curve. The relationship between the superelevation of a curve and its radius is critical for roadway safety. On a tangent roadway section, several forces exist between the roadway surface and the vehicle. There are no significant lateral forces on a vehicle traveling in a straight line, but there is a force from the weight of the vehicle and a normal force that opposes the vehicle's weight. The weight of the vehicle is a function of the mass of the vehicle and gravity. A friction force between the tires of the vehicle and the pavement is also present, but not shown in this picture since the friction is acting along the path of the vehicle. This description is focused on lateral and perpendicular forces. Now let's take a look at the forces that act on a vehicle in a superelevated horizontal curve. We'll see the same forces that were present on the tangent with some additional forces due to the turning motion of the vehicle. The normal forces act perpendicular to the surface of the roadway while the weight of the vehicle is directed towards the center of the earth. On a curve, the vehicle is also subjected to a centripetal acceleration that acts toward the center of the curve. The acceleration is sustained by the friction between the tires and the pavement, as well as the weight of the vehicle. The friction force acts along the cross slope of the roadway in a perpendicular direction from the normal force. Counteracting the tendency of a vehicle traveling at high speeds to slide out of the curve, it is possible to raise the outside of the highway and or lower the inside of the highway along the circular curve. This banking is known as superelevation. Let's look at a simplified diagram of the superelevation forces. All forces acting on the vehicle must be in equilibrium for the vehicle to resist the tendency to slide up or down the pavement while traveling through the curve. The components include the weight, W, the side frictional resistance, F, and the normal force, N. The friction force is equal to the side friction factor, lowercase f, multiplied by the normal force. There is only one non-zero acceleration present which is V squared over R towards the center of the curve. So the forces in the horizontal direction equal mass times acceleration, while the vertical forces equal zero. 
Using our relationships for horizontal and vertical forces, we can develop two equations which will be used to solve for the radius of the curve. After substituting our second equation into the first equation and simplifying this relationship, we arrive at the equation for the radius. In terms of U.S. customary units, with the radius in feet and speed in miles per hour, of V squared divided by 15 times 1 minus F times E divided by F plus E, where E is the superelevation rate and F is the side friction factor. For highway design purposes, it is common to solve this relationship for the radius, so it can be directly applied to roadway design. Our previous equation includes the term of 1 minus E times F. However, E times F is very small and can be assumed as zero for highway design purposes. Therefore, the equation for R is V squared divided by 15 times E plus F, where R is the radius in feet, V is the design speed in miles per hour, E is the superelevation rate in feet per foot, and F is the side friction factor. Due to the wide variations of vehicle speeds on a curve, the side friction factor applied in design is usually substantially less than the coefficient of friction at the point where a vehicle would begin to skid. Many factors within the variables of this equation play into the overall relationship, including the weather and the type and condition of both the pavement and the vehicle's tires. Another important factor for a highway designer is how the transition from normal crown to full superelevation is made. The roadway should be designed in a manner which allows a vehicle to make a smooth transition from the normal crown on the tangent to the superelevation present on the curve. 